Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss our next machine learning project, obesity risk prediction using machine learning. As you can see here, also currently a Kegel competition is going on on this data set. So at the end, we will submit our submission file on Kegel from here. Additionally, I have created a GUI so that we can pass our test data and the GUI will create a submission file for us. So let's get started. As you can see on Kegel, the current competition is the multi-class prediction of obesity risk playground series. You can read the overview section to learn more here. And as you can see, there are only eight days remaining. So you can also participate. I'm sure you will learn something valuable. Let's click on this step data. As you can see here, three files are provided train.csv, taste.csv and sample underscore submission dot csv. So we have to submit our submission file in this format id and our target variable. Also, we can pronounce our target variable as no obesity. Let's get started. I have already downloaded these two files train.csv and taste.csv. You can also download by clicking on this particular button download button. Let's jump to Jupyter notebook. As you can see here, we have imported essential Python libraries like pandas for data manipulation. Matplotlib and Shibon for visualization, scikit-learn for machine learning and LightGBM for gradient boosting. Here you might have a question why we are using only one classifier LGBM classifier, right? Actually, I have tried many classifiers up to now, but I found this one is the best for this data set. So instead of using multiple classifiers, we are using just one this one. LGBM classifier only. You may try other classifiers as well. Now our next step. Load the data. So this line of code reads the data from a CSV file named train.csv that we have downloaded from Kegel into a pandas data frame called train underscore data. You can use any other name as well. Now our next step. Display the first few rows of the data frame. So here we are using head method which allowing you to quickly inspect the structure and the contents of the data set that you can see over here. Total we are having this many features and this is our target variable that we are going to predict. Now let's discuss our data set first. So our data set consists of the estimation of obesity levels in people from the countries of Mexico, Peru and Colombia with ages between 14 and 61 with diverse eating habits and physical condition. The data was collected using a web platform with a survey where anonymous users answered each question. Then the information was proceed obtaining 17 attributes means 17 features that you can see over here and one target variable that we are going to predict. So total we are having 18 columns. Let's check train underscore data dot shape shape attribute of pandas data frame. Let's execute this cell as you can see over here. Total 18 columns means 17 features and one target variable. So total 18 columns and around 20,000 records means 20,000 observations that you can see over here. Now let's take our first column ID which is unique for each person. Next column gender persons gender as you know it contains two values male or female. Next column age as you can see D type is float age is between 14 years to 61 years. Next column height. Height is in meter. It is between 1.45 meter to 1.98 meter. Next column weight. Weight is between 39 to 165. I think it is in kilogram. Next column family underscore history underscore with underscore overweight. So we can say family history with overweight. It contains two values. Yes or no. Yes or no question. Next FAVC frequent consumption of high calorie food. It is yes or no question. I think question they ask is do you consume high calorie food? Now next column FCVC frequency of consumption of vegetables. Next NCP number of main meals. As you can see D types is float. NCP is between 1 and 4. I think it should be 1, 2, 3 and 4. But our data set is synthetic. So it is taking float values. Now next CAEC consumption of food between meals. 
takes four values sometimes frequently no and always now our next column means our next feature smoke yes or no question i think the question is do you smoke that you can see here it contains two value yes or no next ch2o consumption of water daily takes values between 1 and 3 again it is given as float that you can see over here maybe because of synthetic data its value should be 1 2 or 3 now our next column scc calories consumption monitoring yes or no question that you can see over here now next faf physical activity frequency faf is between 0 to 3 0 means no physical activity and 3 means high workout and again in our data it is given as float that you can see over here next tue time using technology devices tue is between 0 to 2 i think question will be how long you have been using technology devices to track your health in our data it is given as float that you can see over here now our next column means our next feature calc consumption of alcohol takes three values sometimes no and frequently next column mtr ans transportation used so this column takes five values public transportation automobile walking motorbike and bike now final our target variable so this is our target that we are going to predict takes seven values and in this competition we have to give the class name that you can see here on kegel we have to submit this file in this format id and our target variable that you can see over here so in this competition we have to give the class name that you can see over here not the probability which is the case in most competitions as i said this is our target variable takes seven values like insufficient weight normal weight obesity type 1 obesity type 2 obesity type 3 overweight level 1 and overweight level 2 for information regarding our target variable given in the description of this video now let's move on now let's move on now let's check for missing values in our data set so this line of code computes the sum of missing values in each column of our data set providing insight into the presence of missing values in the data set but you can see the output of all zeros indicates that there are no missing values in any column of our data frame that you can see over here so now we have checked for missing values now let's move on let's check for duplicated values so this code checks for duplicated rows in our data set but as you can observe number of duplicated rows zero so output is zero in this case indicating that there are no duplicated rows in our data set that you can see over here so now we have checked for missing values and also for duplicated values now let's move on now let's visualize the distribution of our target variable no obesity so for that i have used count plot that you can see over here so distribution of obesity levels that you can see over here overweight underscore level underscore 2 normal underscore weight insufficient underscore weight obesity underscore type underscore 3 obesity underscore type underscore 2 overweight underscore level underscore 1 obesity underscore type underscore 1 so now let's move on encode the target variable into numerical labels so here as you can see this code encodes the target variable no obesity into numerical labels using the label encoder that you can see over here from sklearn that we have already imported so this step is often necessary for machine learning algorithms that require numerical inputs especially for the target variable so that's why here we are encoding our target variable no obesity now next split features and target variable so this code splits the data set into features and the target variable so we are storing independent variables into x and our target variable that we are going to predict in y now next define categorical and numerical features so here we have separated the categorical and numerical columns to manage them individually that you can see over here categorical features and numerical features from our data set and as you can see we have created separate list for categorical features and numerical features that you can see over here now next split the data into the training and validation sets so as you can see here we have used 
train test split to evaluate the performance of our machine learning model. So these code segments splits the data into the training and validation sets using the train test split function from sklearn that you can see over here. And as you can see here, we are keeping aside 20% data for testing purpose for validation purpose that you can see over here. So we are going to train our model on X train and Y train on our training set. We will perform prediction using unseen samples available inside X underscore test and we will compare our predicted result with our actual values available in Y underscore test. So this way we can use train test split to evaluate the performance of our machine learning algorithms. Now next define pre-processing steps. As you can see in this code, we define pre-processing steps using pipelines and column transformer from sklearn that we have already imported. As you can see here, numerical transformer is a pipeline that scales numerical features using standard scalar. Next, categorical transformer. So this categorical transformer is a pipeline that encodes categorical features using one hot encoder with ignore as a strategy for handling unknown categories preprocessor. This preprocessor is a column transformer that applies different transformations to numerical and categorical features. It applies a numerical transformer to numerical features and the categorical transformer to categorical features that you can see over here. This one. Now let's move on. Define the LGBM model. So here we are creating instance of this classifier. LGBM classifier. So this classifier is specifically designed for classification task. As you know, currently we are performing multi-class classification and will be trained to predict the target variable based on the input features. So that's why here we are creating instance of LGBM classifier. Now next define the pipeline. So here in this code, a pipeline named pipeline is defined using the pipeline class from sklearn that we have already imported. So this pipeline consists of two steps preprocessor and class A fire preprocessor applies preprocessing transformations defined earlier here such as scaling numerical features and encoding categorical features that you can see over here this one next classifier utilize the light GBM model to perform classification task. This one. Now next here define hyperparameters for randomized search. So these hyperparameters will be explored during the randomized search to find the best combination that optimizes the performance of the light GBM classifier. Now next perform randomized search cross validation. So this code segment performs a randomized search cross validation to find the best hyperparameters for the light GBM model that you can see over here param underscore grade that we have defined over here to find best hyperparameters for our model light GBM. Now let's move on. So as you can see in this code we have retrieved the best parameters and the best model obtained from the randomized search using these two attributes based underscore params underscore based underscore estimator underscore and here we are storing into two variable based underscore params and based underscore model. So this variable based underscore params stores the best parameters found during the randomized search cross validation process here that we have performed and this best underscore model. This variable stores the best estimator our model obtained from the randomized search which includes both the pre-processing steps and the model itself. So this way we can get the best parameters and best model after randomized search that we have performed over here. Now here we are printing the best parameters that you can see over here. Here we are evaluating the best model on the validation set that you can see over here x underscore test and y underscore test using this code method of sk and here you can see our validation accuracy around 91 percent now as you can see here we are training our best model on entire data set because we have performed train test split just to evaluate the performance of our machine learning algorithm but at the end during production we have to train our best model on entire data set that we are doing over here. We are training our best model on entire data set using this fit method 
Now next, here we are preparing our test data that you can see over here. Here we are reading our test data into a pandas data frame. As you know, we have downloaded this from Kaggle test.csv, right? So here we are making predictions on test data using our best model. So here we are creating submission data frame, two columns, ID and our target variable, no obesity. And as you can see here, here we have used inverse underscore transform on our test predictions. This one, as you know, because we have converted our target variable to numerical, right? So here we are converting back into that original categorical labels because as you can see on the Kaggle, we have to submit this file with original categorical labels that you can see over here. So that's why here we are using inverse underscore transform. So here we are saving our data frame to CSV so we can submit it on Kaggle. And as you can see here, I have imported job label. So here we are saving our best model and label encoder. So again and again, training is not required. We can perform prediction using this save model. And also here we are saving label encoder. So that we have used to create our GUI. So now next, as you can see, here I have created two GUI using TK Inter. Let me show you the first one. Let me execute this cell. So as you can see here, our first GUI. With this GUI, user can perform predictions for a single user data. Let me show this. Let's take one data. Age 24. 1.60 here yes here also yes 2.0 2.90 yes. sometimes 2.76 0 0.97 sometimes public transfer now let's click on this predict button as you can see over here predicted obesity level overweight underscore level underscore 2 and our model predicted it correctly that you can see over here. As you can see with this UI, user can perform prediction for single user data that you can see. Let me close this. Now let me show you our next GUI. Let me execute this same, as you can see. Here. So with our second GUI, this one, we can provide the entire test file for prediction and it will format in such a way that it can be directly submitted to Kaggle. Let's perform prediction using our second GUI. Let me show this. Let me click on this and let's provide our test. File. As you can see here, predictions have been made and saved as submission.csv. Let me press this OK button. Let me close this GUI as well. As you can see, our submission file created by our GUI. Now let's submit this file to Kaggle. First, you have to join this competition, multi-class prediction of obesity risk. Then only you will see this button, submit prediction. Let's click on this button and let's submit our created file that we have created using our GUI. Now let's write description created using UI. Let's press this button submit. As you can see over here, our public score. Also you can check this leader board that you can see over here. You can take this code from my GitHub account. Link is provided in the description of this video. Please try to improve the accuracy. Hope you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel. If you like this video, Smash that like button. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.